Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and live boots on the ground, prayer in the air from Israel. And I'm going to introduce. I'm going to introduce. Uh, I'm going to let this lady introduce herself. This is worldwide on the internet television. And when I, my name is Wiley, by the way. Nice to meet you, Wiley. And uh, when I interview people, I have three Wiley questions. Okay. Number one, who are you? Number two, where are you from? And number three, why are you on my TV show? <laughs> All right, number one. I'm Lihi Elbaz. I'm from Israel. Why I'm on your TV show, you chose me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, where are we right now? We at the Dead Sea. At the Dead Sea. Yeah. And we're in a store. In a store that sells Dead Sea products. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me take. Let me just give a little view of the store. Go around the store, and uh, folks. Store, yeah. We yeah we <laughs> we have these products in California. Yeah, but you pay there a lot of money. A lot of money. Very expensive. So, All right, tell us your name store. again. Lihi. Say it slow for us Americans. Lihi. Lihi. Yes. Lihi. Okay, Lihi. What's the name of your store? Sea of Spa. Okay. Give me a card before I leave, and I I'll will. make sure, uh, and I'll tell you where you can watch yourself on TV. No problem. Now, tell us. And you can you can order it online. All right, <laughs> all right, very good. Well, this is going to be online. You can go on and see yourself. Now, okay. if I want to later order something online, how do I do it? Through email. Through we, email. Yeah, you have email, navot82 at, at dot com, uh, gmail dot com. And you can order it. Okay, I got live audience right now. They've got their pins out, and they're going to say, "Hey, I always wanted to buy some of those products. Where do I buy them? How do they find it?" The cheapest price you you will find from us. Okay, and give that email or the or the web page again. N A V O T eighty two at gmail dot com. All right, very good. Now I'm not going to take away from your business, but I'm going to get our tour guide over here. I'm going to let you take care of business. Okay. And so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to you from the Dead Sea. We've been on tour all day. We have this gentleman with us. I'm going to ask him the same three questions. Who are you? Where are you from? And uh, rather than why are you on my show, I want to ask the third question. That is, what have we done today? Boots on the ground, prayer in the air. It's dark here almost now. We started almost uh, early in the morning. And so tell us your name, who you are, where you're from, and what do we do today? Well, thanks, Wiley. My name is Aaron. Hi, everyone in America. Shalom. Uh, my name's Aaron Lavaco. I'm the tour guide of Wiley and his group that are touring here in the Holy Land. Uh, we are here at the Dead Sea, and we are doing a tour day. Today is actually a very historical day because this is the first day after the elections. Yesterday, Amen. we have uh, our Prime Minister-elect, Benjamin Netanyahu, who, who has been re-elected for the third time. And uh, so he has said that over the next two to three weeks, he's going to be trying to form a coalition government, which will be a huge challenge. So pray for that. But uh, we started out this morning from Tiberias, where our hotel was. We went up to a place called the Mount of Beatitudes, where uh, our Lord gave the Sermon on the Mount, or the suggested site. Then we went to Capernaum, his hometown after he left Nazareth. Then we came uh, and did a beautiful boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, a beautiful calm day it was today. Uh, I asked Wiley uh, if he would like to actually walk on the water, but he said he'll take the boat ride. Uh, then we moved down after a nice St. Peter's fish lunch. Amen. We went down into the Jordan River. Now, ladies, let me stop you a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, what he's talking about is the St. Peter's Day lunch. Uh, for you Californians especially, we eat lots of fish, but we fillet everything or chop it up. And this was a full, uh, uh, a whole fish, tail, eyes, everything. Bones. Bones, the whole shooting match. Uh, a sort of a different way for us Californians and Americans to eat a fish. But I've eaten it that way before, and it's excellent, excellent food. Uh, okay, where did we go after we ate St. Peter's fish? After that, we, uh, yeah, we went to the Jordan River, and where people uh, in the group had uh, an opportunity for either a first-time baptism or a reconfirmation of their baptism. And then we came all the way down what's called the Jordan Valley, opposite the Moabite Mountains of Jordan, the Gilead Mountains, where Elijah the prophet was born. Then on our right side, we came down via the Gilboa Mountains and Beit Shan, where Saul and his sons 
uh, died and had their heads placed on the gates of Beit Sham. We came right through Samaria into the Judean mountains and now we're having a pit stop at, uh, at the Dead Sea, a place called Al Mog, which means a pearl. And then in about 10 minutes, we're going to head up to the city of the great king, Jerusalem. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate what you're doing with this tour. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you uh, we're on boots on the ground, prayer in the air with this group to pray. And uh, I broached the subject earlier. As many of you know, David Decker from here in Jerusalem comes on with us once in a while. Uh, but I broached the subject with Aaron about the possibility of the Wiley Drake Show having a new correspondent reporter from Jerusalem on political matters or any matters. And uh, I want you to pray for him. Pray for me. If God brings that together, it will please my heart. But I don't want to do anything God don't want to do. But I want you to pray for him. Pray for me. And who knows, you might see him on the show on a regular basis. God bless you. I'll let you get back to work, and I'll just film these Thanks, folks. Wiley, and God bless you all, and uh, shalom from Jerusalem. Shalom, my brother. God bless you. All right. Um, all right. They're doing business, so I'm going to go to the bus. And... Um, Okay, folks, I'm going to make my way back out to the bus. They're going to do a little bit more shopping. I'm going to go ahead and get on the bus and uh, uh, talk, to, uh, uh, talk to some people as they come back on the bus. If I see any more of our folks, we're doing a live television broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, right here at the Dead Sea. Where are you folks from? Would you like to be, would you mind being on camera with me? It's for a television program, a Christian television program, family program, and we're just on tour, and I have to do a show at this time every day, and we're live on the air now. No, thank you. All right, all right, very good. All right, folks, we're going to make our way back over to the bus. We're doing a live television show. Anybody want to be on TV? You want to be on TV? Come on over. I don't make you sign any release. I don't pay you. We're live on the television going around the world. I'll tell you where you can go back and watch yourself on TV if you'd like to be on. Anybody want to be on? He wants to be on. Everybody's pointing at everybody else. I thought people in, in uh, Israel were bold and brave. And now they see the camera and they're running scared. <laughs> Anybody want to be on with me? Come on. It'll go around the world. Scary. You're on right now. Let me ask you my three famous questions. Number one, who are you? Number two, where are you from? And number three, why are you here tonight? Right here. Who are you? I'm Wiley Drake. I was vice presidential candidate in 2008 in the United States. In 2012, I was presidential candidate. I'm a Baptist preacher. I'm a Judeo-Christian, Messianic pastor and television talk show host. Where are you from? I'm from California now, but I originally came out of the state of Arkansas. Arkansas. That's where I'm from originally. I'm from Alabama. Alabama. I'm going to be in Alabama in a few days meeting with Judge Roy Moore. Good. We're going to we're going to support him and help him. He's taking a strong stand I know for is. the family. I and we're going to be there to help support him. I was in Alabama when they made him take the Ten Commandments out of there. And I'm the State Capitol. State Capitol in Montgomery. Birmingham. Yeah. Montgomery. Montgomery, excuse me. Sorry, Judge. Been a long time since I was down there and I forgot where it was at. But uh, I'm going to be doing a live show, hopefully in the very near future, from there. And I'll tell you where you can watch the show and you can see it as well. Okay. Anything you'd like to say to your friends in Alabama? Are you from here now? or? No, I'm here with the um, Gary Stearman and Bob Ulrich, <coughs> Daniel Wright Scholars Tour. Um, What's that all with, about? This is with Prophecy Watchers, a brand new ministry, which is at the prophetic. We support Israel, and we are Christians, and we are Messianic. Well, we're Christians, we're Messianic, and we also support Israel. 
I'm going to give you a card for my show because you want to go back later and see yourself on the show. You can if you will take uh, take the tough card first. That's what I do in D.C. And then take one of these. That's when the show is on. If you look up at the top of that card, it'll say the Wiley Drake Show. See you see that? Yes, That's sir. where you go on your computer, and this will be in the archives. It's live right now. At the top of the hour, it will it will go into the archives, and you'll see it there. It'll say the Wiley Drake Show. It'll be titled later the Dead Sea, but I don't get to put the titles on I until I get to my computer later. But I would love to have somebody from your group get in touch with the Congressional Prayer Conference. I've heard about you guys, and we want to be a part of what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Shalom. Shalom. <clears throat> All right, let's go out here and talk to our driver. This is the guy that's been putting us up and down the road, and uh, I want him to answer my three famous Wiley questions. Who are you? I'm mayor. I'm driver for the group. All right. And yeah. where are you from? From Jerusalem. From Jerusalem. All right. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is quite quite a, a, a ride, uh, especially for the driver uh, himself. These are small roads. This is a big bus. And uh, <laughs> anything you'd like to say to people in America? America, thank you for coming to Israel. Thank you, we always welcome, and uh, God bless you all. Amen. All right. Amen. Sir, would you like to be on? Nothing. No. Okay. All right. We got one of our people that's on the tour with us. Tell us your name and where are you from? Phil Deland from Anchorage, Alaska. From Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. I'm going to make my way back on the bus. All right. And we're going to finish the show on the bus. All right. Because I don't want to get uh, I don't want to get left behind because I'm out doing my show in the parking lot. So we're gonna make our way, I don't know, uh, can we tell the drive, can you turn some lights on for us? Thank you, I appreciate it. It's dark in here, folks. My camera's making all kind of noises because it's too dark. Now we got light, there we go, there we go. I'm gonna make my way to the back row and that way I won't bother everybody else quite as much. I'll be on the back row. We'll be live. If you'd like to come back and be on the show, come on back. Especially those that got baptized today. Uh -oh. Come on back and tell us about your baptismal experience in the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized. So I'm going to have a seat right back here. And uh, now, tell us, young man, tell us your name again. Philip Deland. Philip Deland. And you live in Anchorage? Yes, sir. What do you do in Anchorage when I'm you're not getting ready to come on a trip to Israel? I'm a student studying geology at the University of Alaska Anchorage. Okay, very good. Uh, I have a dear, dear friend that is a man that you ought to check out. Yeah. Especially in reference to geology and especially in reference to how it applies and works with uh, evolution mm -hmm. and the teaching of that. And uh, he is very much a strong creationist mm -hmm. and he uses a lot of scientific evidence, especially from people like you. His name is Kent Hovind. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not. I have, actually. Okay, well, you need to check Kent Hovind out when you get a chance. But, uh, I went to a Christian school and we'd watch his videos. Okay, class. well, you know, he, our government just put him in jail for eight years. Really? Yep. Be because he was teaching that evolution was bogus and that creationism was the truth. And they didn't like that, the New World Order, and the government put him in jail. Been in jail for eight years, and they're trying to retry him. But anyway, check him out. Go to freekenthoven.com when you get a chance. Now, how, what what year are you in? I've got a year left for on my uh, bachelor degree. So you're working on your bachelor's, and you got a year left. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, you're a short timer. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I went to school 100 years ago, and I went to all my school, I was always talking... <laughs> People always said, there comes Wiley. He's talking about being a short-timer. As soon as I got past the halfway mark, I figured that was a short-timer. <laughs> All right, so why do you want to study geology? I'm going to tell you, I should probably show my ignorance, but that's just studying rocks. It uh, is. It is just studying rocks. But what else is it? Well, it's uh, it's very <laughs> important economically. Is the big driving force in, in Alaska particularly. We have a lot of undeveloped resources 
oil's very big, but also the mining industry. There's mm. lots of valuable ore deposits. It's a big state. And um, it's important for all kinds of things like construction, even advising engineers on like where to build, you know, what, what sort of code you need to follow, stuff like that. Um, it's important for well water. Um, it's useful for all kinds of things that people don't generally think about. So mm. it's actually a very, uh, it's a, a field that's applicable in a wide range of cases. So well, one of the things that I've had a little teeny bit of experience with your business, so to speak, was many, many years ago, I worked for a company called Gardner Denver Company and Gardner Denver Company made a product called a rock drill. The rock drill was primarily designed to drill holes in rocks yeah. where they could plant charges and then blow away mm -hmm. uh, for road construction. And those guys were really artists with dynamite. Mm -hmm. They would drill the holes, place the dynamite in, and then light the fuse. Yeah. And then they would completely demolish the part of the mountain that they wanted to demolish. Mm -hmm and then they'd remove the stone and you had a clear path. In fact, if you go into the mountains of Colorado, where are you from? Anchorage. From I'm Anchorage. From, I'm from Anchorage, yeah. Uh, but if you go into those parts of the country, you'll see as you go through, when you drive through the highway on both sides, you'll see these Oh yeah, we got those all lines. over. We okay. got those all over. Those are half time. holes. Mm -hmm. That's where the hole was when the dynamite was placed in there and the back hole stays there. Yeah, and everything, and everything outside of the dynamite. Everything outside of that, down. yeah. And so I worked for a company called Gardner Denver and my job was to be a salesman and a marketing guy mm -hmm. and we would sell those. They were pneumatically controlled, ours were, and our claim to fame was everybody had rock drills. But when you're using a rock drill out in the mountains and all the dust, the electric motors go out very quickly. Yeah. But we had pneumatic motors and they run good on dirt and dust. Mm -hmm. And so that's that was my exposure to your trade, archaeology and rocks. Very interesting. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Hi, what do you think about Not the tour so far? We're um, about halfway through. Having a blast. Yeah, amen. Amen. So, well, yeah, what did you, know, you do today? Tell our listening audience. You've been on a tour. You've been on a I bus. I need to think back. It's been yeah, a lot. But, but tell us, day. tell us, sort of, don't, don't tell the whole day because our driver, I mean, our host has told some of it. All right. But, but tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, we, where we were and what we did and what yeah. you did in particular. Yeah, all right. Well, we went to, we went to Capernaum. We went on a boat on the Sea of Galilee and had some praise and flag waving and horn blowing. It was a good time. Amen. We uh, took a dip in the Jordan River. Mm, amen. And uh, now we're just enjoying a scenic drive on down to or on up to Jerusalem. Up to Jerusalem. It's always up. Yeah, that's, a, always up. <laughs> that's what that's what the uh, host here said a while ago. He said, even though we're driving from the north south to Jerusalem, we never say driving down doesn't, to Jerusalem. Doesn't matter which direction. It doesn't is. matter. We're up. always going up to Jerusalem, no matter what direction we're going. And he shared that with us, and and I appreciate that. And uh, one of the things that it's my privilege to do, I serve as the uh, chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. And I go to D.C. once a month. And uh, we meet there and pray there and share there. And by the way, folks, if you want to find out more about that, just go to Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot org. That's our website. That's our website, and you'll see our website. Now, the reason I bring that up is not only to put a plug in for the Congressional Prayer Conference, but to tell you a story uh, that's similar to the one that Aaron told, mm -hmm. and that is when I go there, I meet and we pray, and we go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Usually the first stop and the last stop in our week's tour is at the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to be there on the 28th, because they're hearing the oral arguments on the 28th of next month. They're hearing oral arguments in the Supreme Court case over the family issue of if, is our government going to allow same-sex marriage? And we're afraid they are, so we're there to pray against that. Now, the reason I bring all of that up is, is that when people say, well, where do you meet when you go there? And I say, we go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And we have a friend that has an office. What I say is right behind the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And so they always tell me, though, when you talk about our office, Wiley, do not say we're behind the Supreme Court. I don't care which side you come from. 
you never say behind the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. That's a violation of protocol. It's like going up to Jerusalem. Ah, and yeah. so that's just one of my other stories in reference to that. Ladies and gentlemen. It's near. Yeah, it's near the Supreme Court. It's on, <laughs> it's on the backside of First Street. The Supreme Court is at number one First Street. Uh, the office there is a group of Christian friends of ours called, um, oh my goodness, uh, I'll think of their name in a minute. Now I'm forgetting. I'm pretty sure I've been there. But I'm pretty, I can't think yeah, of the name yeah, either, but yeah. I've been in that uh, office. But uh, they do, their office is, again, right behind the Supreme Court, but they always remind me, no, 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 we're adjacent. It's, it's just in front of the back of the Supreme Court. Adjacent or something else. <laughs> Don't say behind the Supreme Court. That's not protocol correct here. And uh, so we, uh, Brother Pat Mahoney is back there, mm -hmm. and uh, some other fellows that work there as missionaries on Capitol Hill around the year, around the clock. We only go there once a month, but uh, we have a great time there. We pray there, and that's our main task at the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., is to pray for our nation. And our motto is to pray America back to one nation under God. And that's what we're trying to do. Well, thank you so much. God All bless right. you. All right. Let's see if there's anybody else up the aisle that wants to come back. Folks, we're live on TV. If you want to be on, just come to the back row. I'm back here. Studio is open for business. <laughs> come on back and tell us about your baptismal experience, some of you. We had some folks here today that were baptized at the same place Jesus was baptized. But you know, the interesting thing about baptism is baptism does not wash away your sin. The reason I know that for a fact is that's what the Bible says. Baptized. That's, what the, that's what the Bible says. But even more important, Jesus had no sin. Jesus was baptized. In fact, John the Baptist said, wait a minute. John's a guy that started off saying, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Jesus went to John and said, baptize me, John, John was amazed because he knew who Jesus was. He knew he was God. He knew he was perfect. And he knew he could not and should not baptize Jesus because he said that would be indicating Jesus had sinned. Now, but Jesus said, no, I still desire to be baptized because I want to do what is right. Jesus was doing the religiously right thing even though he did not need to be baptized. He was baptized not for the removal of his sins but as a religious ceremony. And so the religious ceremony, uh, come on back young lady, you're one of those that were baptized. Come on back, you're live on TV. Just come on back closer to the studio. I already got him on. Come on back a little further, a little further, a little further, close up, close up. And uh, I got to ask you the same question. So what's your name? My name's Jan. Jan, and where are you from? I'm from Alaska. Same place that young guy's from, all right? <laughs> that happens to be your son, I believe. Yes. All right. Well, Jan, uh, tell us about your experience today. I know we've been a lot of places but you were at one place today that I want you to share with our audience about. This is a Christian audience, a Judeo-Christian office around the world. I want you to tell them uh, your feelings emotionally, spiritually, etc. Uh, from your experience this morning in the same place Jesus was baptized. Tell us about it. Well, it was a very joyful experience. It was very peaceful and uh, it was really awesome. I don't really know how to describe it. <laughs> well, it, I think awesome is a pretty good word. See, I'm from California, and, and I have three uh, daughters, and I have a whole bunch of granddaughters, and most of them, because they talk California, uh, they, all, they use the word awesome quite often. And so I think awesome is a good word. And I especially like it because of that song we sing, Our God is an awesome God, and He really is. And I didn't used to say awesome because I'm an old guy and my kids were teenagers and they would say, oh, come on, Dad, come on, Grandpa, that's, that's our language, don't use our language. <laughs> but now I tell them I have to because I have to sing the songs. Thank you, Jan, God bless you. 
tell well, before you get off, tell us what you do in Alaska. What we do for a living? What what do you do in Alaska? Okay, well in Alaska I do pro life ministry and in various forms. I love the uh, the message of life because God gives God purchased our redemption and I like to give the message of life. Amen. And now, if someone would like to get involved in your ministry, they'd like to find out more about it, they'd like to make a donation to it, or they'd like to just let you know they're praying for you, how can they get in touch with you? Well, uh, Now, remember, this is going worldwide, so don't give out a private number that you don't want everybody in the world to have. Well, we're connected with Bound for Life. Okay. And it, the... Um, Headquarters is uh, in Washington D.C. Matt Lockett runs uh, a house of prayer there and a bound for life. You, you call Matt and tell him you were on the Wiley Drake show. He's been on this show before. Has he? Several times, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And, and so tell him I'll be in Washington the week of the 27th cool. of next month. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so we're kind of connected with that ministry. There's uh, like ministries. I don't want to embarrass you, but do you know the website? I'm embarrassed now because you can't remember. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, folks, send me an email. Turn the lights back on, please. You're shutting our show down. I think we're going. Have we, got, have we got everybody on the bus? Mr. Bus Driver, can I have some light? Please? I'm in the dark. Somebody said why he's in the dark, but I didn't realize I was this much in the dark. <laughs> Dennis, were you sitting back here? Did I take your seat? No, you're fine. All right. Would you tell the bus driver to turn the lights on? I don't think he's going to since we're driving. Well, he... Yikes. Fishman. Okay. Fish manicure. Fish manicure is free in Jerusalem. The fish bite your feet. Oh yeah? Uh, yeah, they bite on your feet and they get rid of all that dead stuff. All right. So you got to do this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you. What gifts for you? Okay. Anybody know how to turn a light on? Do we have overhead lights in the seats? Light. Then, you need a light, don't you? Yeah, do we have an overhead light in the seat? No, but I have a light. Why here? Yeah, he's in the back. You said he was going to the back. I'm on the back row, but I need the light. Somebody show me how to turn the light on. I should have tried that already. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the dark. For the first time, the Wiley Drake show went dark. It's going to be light in a minute. And nothing broke. <laughs> Everything's still working. Yep. And the Lord said, Let there be light. And there was. And there was light. All <laughs> right. Let's see. Uh, let me let me see. Yeah, don't send that into the camera. You won't be able to see it. Uh, let me see here. Okay, now we need the light on you. All right. Oh, really? It's on me. It's okay. on you. The light's on you now. Now, yeah. now we can see you on television. All really? right. No kidding. Right. You had to, today was a fun day, but you had a work day today. I did. You did a job. Uh, you didn't blow the show for a lot, but you did blow it. But another job you had today, and what was that? Tell us about it. I had a lot of fun getting to participate in baptizing, baptizing some people in the Jordan River. And I got baptized first. That was awesome. Amen. And Alan Parker and I uh, baptized several people. And it was just an awesome, an awesome experience. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, the whole the day. Lord. The whole day has been that way. It's been a great, great trip. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually rode a camel a while ago, too. Did you? I really did. Okay. I can't believe I did it. Rode a camel. I did. All right. Very good. Yeah. And, folks, when I was here 27 years ago, camel rides were 20 bucks. <laughs> How much were they today? Five dollars. Five dollars. I, I don't know what's wrong with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars. That's a very but it was good. cultural experience, isn't it? It's good. And I think probably... Yeah. Uh, today, just going back, coming back here, not on the interstate highway, but coming back on that two-lane road, yeah. and going through all those different areas, like the border of Jordan, and 
learning about the Battle of Jericho right there where it was. When I, yeah, amen. I've been teaching the show for all this time. I always tell that story. You know? Yeah, amen. And now so, you can say, I've been there. Oh, yeah, man. It been there and done that. A whole new understanding of it. Yeah. And anybody, if you haven't been to the Holy Man, you got to come. Amen. You cannot experience Jesus Guys, like this you can't hear. It's so we, cool. That's and know this is the ascent. Even in well, Capernaum, where so you first I started was, preaching, they, right? They, they Amen. We learned about the, that today. The sounds, Peter, right the when he first started sounds, preaching. You know, it's so interesting to learn all the facts about it. You know, we know some things from the Bible, the but you're right the there in the presence of where it took place. That really had a meaning to it. And it right, and made me done. feel so much more the pain that he had when they wouldn't Probably listen to him. Cosmo who wouldn't listen to the, mountain of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and so many people that heard the word and didn't listen. And that's why even when when the uh, the pot or the disciples when he came back after he died on the cross, remember that? And Thomas amen. doubted, you know? And we just doubt so much. Yeah. Amen. Man, there's no reason to doubt the word is real, isn't it? He's good. Amen. Well brother, let's get to the practical just for a moment. Yes. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this is my brother in Christ, my trainer in Christ. Now, he, he's a little bit junior me, uh, but he is my trainer. And I'll ask him to tell him tell you about what he's training me to do after I ask him to tell you who he is. Right. He is known as Mr. Shofar. And why are you known as Mr. Shofar? Well, because when I first heard about the Shofar and started teaching it, God told me I was to grow an army. Then people couldn't say McCurahan very easy. You know, McCurahan. They couldn't be say McCurahan and everything else. And so they got used to hollering at me, and every once in a while people say, Hey, Mr. Shofar. <laughs> you know, and it just kind of stuck. Amen. Now, in blowing the Shofar, ladies and gentlemen, they were at the uh, meeting in California in Anaheim at the stadium, and Dennis called me up and said, Hey, your church is close to the stadium. We need a place to come over the night before uh, to sort of train some new fellas and to get the old fellas together right. and sort of do a little rehearsal. And can we come to your church? And I said, yes. And so we welcomed them to our church uh, because I, too, uh, have had an interest in uh, Messianic Fellowship, and we are one now. But at that point, uh, we had just begun it. And uh, Dennis came over, and they did their rehearsal. And at that point, he encouraged me to uh, become a part of, I think it's Shofar International. Shofar Call. Shofar International. Call right. International. And they presented me not only with a membership of that, but a Shofar. That's and right. folks, you've seen me play it on the program. You've seen us blow it in our church. And uh, uh, Dennis is training me, folks. I keep hearing people be nice to me, and they say, well, Pastor, you're getting pretty good with that horn. <laughs> right. And I know when they're saying pretty good, they mean practice some more. <laughs> right. But, uh, uh, so tell us what you teach about the show. Yeah, we're, we're traveling from well, the show far, number one, it's the first known instrument three known to man, below and it was first used the by seven, God himself. To about and if you remember the story where three, God was above. getting ready to give the law to seven, Moses, we told Moses to go and get the people ready for three days. He had to cleanse herself. It was that important to him, you know, to take me ready for this. And then come around the mountain. Don't touch the mountain or you'll die. But he's on the mountain, you know, he's up there. But he said, don't touch the mountain, but come around the mountain. And then Moses went up the mountain to get the law from God. But it said that when you go up there, Moses, you're going to hear a, a terrible noise. It's going to be an awesome noise, like a thunderstorm or something. And a, and a big dark cloud is going to come down here. And you're going to hear the trumpet. And when that trumpet sounded, it was God. It was the voice of God. And I it was like three great blasts that just continued to get louder and louder. To see. where after that, to then Moses the same, truly answered God and said, what are you, whatever you want to do. And that's when God gave him the which is Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So, but and that was the first right about time the trumpet had ever sounded by like God hour. himself. So and so then the, the tradition of the trumpet started really 